Hello and welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about weightlifting. How do you start weightlifting even if you've never set foot in a gym before? I'm going to go over some tips that can help you to feel more comfortable in the weight room, able to train a little bit smarter, um, and hopefully avoid some of the mistakes that I have made in the past. So the first thing that I want to talk about is to make goals. And I think this is like one of the most important things is to write out your yearly goals, your monthly goals, um, your weekly goals. Like for me, just as an example, um, I have a workout calendar and these are essentially kind of like my monthly goals. So well, it's like, I guess it's like my daily goals written in a month form. So for each day I have whatever workout I'm going to be doing and yeah, it just helps me to stay on track. It definitely eliminates the motivation factor because like I know exactly what workout I have to do for the day and you know, it doesn't involve my emotions if I'm feeling less motivated to work out, like I'm still going to go train because it's on my calendar. So having that accountability is really important. Um, and the thing about goals is you want to be super, super specific. So let's say your weekly goal is to go to the gym at least three times for 30 minutes. That's a really good goal because you have a certain amount of times you're going to go to the gym and a duration, um, rather than just saying, I'm going to try to go to the gym this week. You know, that's a really unspecific goal and it's more likely that you're not going to stick to it. Whereas if you set limits and write it down, um, that is going to help you a lot more. And I recommend writing it on a post-it note, sticking it on the mirror, or writing it in a journal, somewhere where you are going to hold yourself accountable and come into contact with that every single day. And if you do this enough times, you will eventually just form a habit and it doesn't you won't even think about it. Like when I create my monthly calendar, I don't really think about it. Like I just do it and I just go and train because it's so integral to my life now. Um, so I don't really need to think in terms of like goals anymore, but I do still, I actually this morning was writing out my monthly goals. And so what I do is at the end of every month, I will evaluate how I did and just write like a page about how I believe that I achieve my goals for that month. So for like, I have physical goals and then mental goals, work goals, and other goals. So for physical goals, I had complete all workouts on my calendar, um, but I didn't really need to technically write that down because it's something that I like intrinsically do, um, but it's something that's still really important. So I wrote it down. Um, get at least 8,500 steps per day, which I'm now at college, so that's a lot easier for me to get, um, and do at least one day of cardio, um, with whatever form you want. So, do cardio for, adding cardio for one day a week, um, which I know could sound sad to some people, but, uh, <laughs> I, I used to do a lot more cardio, but now that I don't have a lot of time, um, it's hard for me to get in, like, cardio that isn't walking, so, yeah. But I joined boxing, so there we go. So yeah, um, but this, so writing goals can apply to any different, can apply to like any area of your life. Um, like I said, I have mental and work goals and other goals as well, which include like social goals and extracurriculars. Another tip that I want to bring up is that if you're just starting in the gym, what you should be focusing on are compound movements. So things like the squat, the deadlift, the bench press, the overhead press, um, hip thrusts, barbell rows, or any other type of row. So unfortunately my video cut out again. Um, you may remember this happened to me in the first video. Um, my video like kept pausing and the audio wasn't matching up with the video, so I am now just recording with my iPhone camera. Um, and I am going to um, pick up kind of where I left off. So I was talking about the importance of focusing on compound movements when you're beginning your weightlifting journey, and this is just because it incorporates it's more muscle groups, and so you're getting a bigger bang for your buck, um, you're expending more energy, and if you just focus on 
progressively getting better and better on these compound movements, you're going to see great development in your muscles and your strength as well. For instance, what I'll do in my workout is um, the other day, well, when I was filming this, I, was tr I uh, had just trained legs. And so what I did that day was I started with front squats, which is a great compound movement to target your quads. Um, and then I went into hip thrusts, which is another great compound movement for your glutes. Um, and a little bit of hamstrings. And then I did straight legged deadlifts. So another great compound movement for your hamstrings. And if you're not sure what these are, you can just look up on YouTube how to do X, Y, and Z, and you will find tons and tons of videos on specific movements. Um, but yeah, then after I do my compound movements, I go on to more accessory work. So I went on to things like leg presses and kickbacks, um, adductors, abductors, that kind of thing. You wanna use the most energy for those compound movements. You know, it's gonna take a lot more energy to squat than to do the abductor machine or something like that. So you wanna expend the most energy on your compound movements and just focus on getting stronger on those compound movements. The next thing that I kind of went into was circuit style training versus a more typical bodybuilder type training. So if so really it just comes down to personal preference, but as a beginner, I would really consider circuit style training because it incorporates both cardio and weights. And when you first start lifting, you're going to gain muscle, um, regardless of if you train with a bodybuilder style or a circuit style. So I would just opt for, card um, for a circuit style of training because you're getting both cardio in and weight training and that's really going to help you um, with recomposition if that's your goal um, which is building muscle and losing fat at the same time which you totally are which you are primed to do as a beginner and so focusing on both cardio and weights is going to help you achieve this goal um, maximally um, but again, it just comes down to personal preference. So for example, let's say it's leg day, you're doing front squats, which is a great compound movement. Um, then straight after that, maybe you go into leg extensions and then you end the superset or rather the circuit um, with 20 seconds of jump squats. So this is great because you're getting in the most effective movements for the muscle group so you're definitely going to be building muscle um, especially if you're progressively adding weight each week which i'll talk about in a second um, but you're also getting your your power up with the jump squats and building endurance as well so it's really going to hit a lot of different um a lot of different goals um, such as like i said building endurance building power building strength um, building muscle so um, as a beginner you're totally able to do all of those things because your body isn't used to any of it and um, a circuit style is just going to allow you to incorporate a lot of different styles of training into one um, and I also just um, enjoy that type of training as well I don't do too much um, circuit training anymore um, I will do some of it on like my functional days but yeah so it really just depends on what you like and what your goals are but as a beginner I definitely recommend that but if circuit style training is not your thing um, then traditional bodybuilder training is good too where let's say you do four sets of eight front squats um, which is what I did that day so um, I did a set of squats and then I rested for two minutes and then I went again um, to make sure that I was really hitting that um, set with maximum intensity to build the most muscle that I can so yeah, it really just depends where you are in your training journey and what you enjoy. And you can even do a mix of both. You could start out with traditional um, bodybuilder type squats or deadlifts for your compound movement. And then you can go into circus style training for your accessory work. So really it just depends on how you want to structure your training. Um, I mentioned progressive overload and this is the most one of the most important things you want to think about when training um, regardless of whether you are a beginner an intermediate or advanced you know the goal in lifting is always to progress each and every session um, and obviously you know you're not going to progress every single session um, unless maybe you're very like new to the gym but the goal is to progress every single session and 
Um, there are a lot of ways to do this. I'm not going to go into all of them because this isn't um, a video about progressive overload, but I might make a video about it in the future, or there are probably plenty of YouTube videos already on progressive overload, but some things you could do are increase the reps, increase the weight, um, increase time under tension, things like that, and that's going to just help you to gradually progress each session. Um, there's, I can't remember the name of it, I might have to look it up after this and insert it somewhere on the screen, but there's a Greek mythology um, story where basically this guy um, carries a calf when it's very young and he carries the calf every single day and eventually the calf grows and he grows into a bull and the man is still able to carry the giant bull and the reason he's able to do that is because each and every day the calf gradually increased in weight and so his body gradually adapted to the stimulus and he was able to eventually carry the big heavy bull at the end um, which he wouldn't have been able to do on day one obviously so it's all about gradual little steps and eventually you will be able to carry a bull as well but don't start out trying to carry a bull do not go heavy at first like if you are new to the gym pretty much anything you do is going to give you muscle growth and you're going to get pretty sore when you first join the gym so i would start out pretty light so if you're just squatting for the first time um there are a few things you want to do before you even start squatting which is one watch youtube videos on how to squat and make sure that you're learning correct form um, two, you can ask someone at the gym nearby who maybe is also squatting or just nearby um, to show you some tips. And honestly, don't be nervous about it because if someone comes up and asks you how to perform a movement, you're probably going to feel, you're probably going to be pretty prideful and you're going to feel excited to teach someone, especially because a lot of people in the gym are passionate about what they're doing. And, you know, we all just want to help people and give them tips. So don't feel nervous about asking people. People are more than happy to help you. Um, because everyone starts from somewhere. And, uh, you know, no one really knew what they were doing at first either. And then the third thing I would recommend is potentially getting a coach. I mean, I only really recommend this for maybe one to two months, unless you're more serious about your training. But as a beginner, you don't really need it coach for that long unless um, the only reason you really need a coach when you're first starting is to show you proper form and to just spot you and make sure that you're doing everything correctly so I would definitely recommend getting a coach for at least the first month um, maybe two maybe three just to show you how to perform each movement make sure that you're doing it correctly um, yeah and then after that, you don't really, you know, need to keep paying for a coach once you know what you're doing. Once you get the technique down, kind of perform the movement and see if you're feeling it where you want to feel it. So see if you have that mind-muscle connection in the way that you want. Um, because everyone's proportions are different, everyone's biomechanics are different, and so, um, maybe the way I squat isn't the way that you you feel your quads the most. And it took me a while, even sometimes still when squatting, to really like feel it in my quads rather than like in my back or in my glutes. Um, like if I really wanna target my quads, I really have to focus on that mind-muscle connection and say like, okay, drive through the quads and then my body will kind of adjust to you know, my proportions to accurately feel my quads working. So um, kind of play around with the movement once you get the technique down and see if there's a certain style of movement that will give you more mind-muscle connection. So whether it's leaning forward slightly more on a squat or elevating your heels more, um, I, I do that now when I squat. So. I will elevate my heels with just plates on the ground, which is a really good way to feel your quads more. Um, maybe on hip thrusts, you wanna move your legs forward a little bit, move them back a little bit, so you feel it where you wanna feel it. Um, so just play around um, and focus on that mind-muscle connection. The most important thing when you're starting out is technique and mind-muscle connection. Like, that is the most important thing 
And then once you get technique down and once you feel it in the right places, then you can start focusing on progressive overload, focus on weight. Um, but when you first start, don't focus on weight, you know, don't be intimidated by the guy next to you, like tunnel vision, focus on what you're doing and eventually you'll be able to work your way up to where everyone else is. But, you know, everyone starts somewhere and, you know, the guy who might be deadlifting 400 pounds probably was not deadlifting 400 pounds when he first walked into the gym. Um, if he was, that'd be pretty amazing. <laughs> but chances are he was not. Um, probably started out with a much, much lighter weight. And so don't feel intimidated and don't compare yourself. Um, that's another really big tip is, and I sometimes fall into this trap too, but don't compare your step one to someone else's step five. So, you know, don't compare your start of the fitness journey to someone who's already three years into their training, which, you know, when I first started um, training, I would compare myself to all the fitness influencers who, you know, have abs and they're able to deadlift 300 pounds and, you know, things I weren't taking into consideration was the fact that I had just started the gym. I'm a lot lighter than these people on Instagram. So, like, it really just depends on, like I said, your proportions, your weight, your height, and how long you've been training. If you just joined the gym last week, and you're comparing yourself to the guy next to you who's been lifting for four years, it's not a fair comparison. I mean, it really just comes down to experience and doing the same thing day in and day out. And, um, you know, you can't expect progress right away, which is why a lot of people don't last in the gym. Um, so you need to be patient. You need to enjoy what you're doing. And, you know, don't compare yourself to someone who's been doing this for multiple years when you just started. You need to start somewhere and you can't expect to be the greatest um, when you just start, you know. Being humble is really important in bodybuilding. Just a quick note on nutrition, you really want to focus on eating to actually fuel your sessions. So instead of, you know, starting on a cut, um, it depends, I guess, where you, it also depends like where you are. Like if you're severely overweight, then yeah, you can cut your calories a bit and you'd probably be fine. Um, but if you're more, um, you have like a maybe 15 pounds to lose, 10 pounds to lose, or you're more skinny and you wanna gain muscle, then I would definitely not recommend cutting your calories because as you train, your metabolism is going to go up anyway and you are naturally just going to burn more energy. So I don't really recommend cutting your calories much at first and instead you want to focus on your pre-workout nutrition and um, your post-workout nutrition but really your pre-workout nutrition is very important because you want to make sure that you're you have enough energy to go into your session um, because if you go into your session with not enough energy um, you're just gonna half-ass it and um, it's not going to be as effective as if you went in with more energy under your belt um, so I recommend a good serving of carbs uh, right before your workout. Um, I will typically have something like oatmeal, cereal. Um, I've been having Quest bars lately, but I don't know if I'd recommend those because they do have a lot of fiber. Um, just things with like a lot of carbs and some protein. Um, and then after your workout, you're really gonna want protein as well protein and carbs to replenish your uh, glycogen stores um, and fat is going to kind of slow down the uptake of the carbohydrates so I wouldn't recommend having really fat before and after your workout um, but again just play around with it see what feels good to your body when you work out you know you might have eggs in the morning and realize really bad idea before I work out and you just learn as you go along what to have, what not to have, what gives you the most energy, what keeps you feeling full, um, what depletes your energy fast, and you can tailor food choices to your experiences over time. But um, yeah, it's really important to actually eat to fuel your workout so that you have the energy to you know, give your maximum in each session because you're there for about an hour, an hour and a half, you want to give it everything you got, and, um, 
you know, you, mus building muscle is a lot harder than losing fat. So you want to try to maximize your training so that you're gaining the maximum amount of muscle that you possibly can. And in order to do that, you want to make sure that you're eating enough, um, which is going to give you the energy to train. If you want to incorporate cardio, um, which isn't necessarily required, um, but if you are looking to really um, recomp your body or lose fat, then cardio um, is a great option. I would recommend lower intensity cardio though, because higher intensity cardio is, well one, if you were just weight training and you go in to do high intensity cardio, um, it's gonna be a little bit hard to give that high intensity cardio everything that you have when you were just weight training um, and depleted your glycogen and your energy. I certainly wouldn't be able to really do it. Um, and if you are, you know, are you weight training hard enough? Um, because if you were, you probably don't have the energy you need to do hit cardio. Also, if you do hit cardio, it's a lot harder to recover from that and do weight training. So I was doing hit cardio um, about one day a week. I used to do it two days a week and then I ended up doing it one day a week. And even still, like, it was a little bit hard to give the, my maximum effort to my weight training sessions. So um, I would recommend things like walking on an incline, biking, elliptical, Stairmaster, even the Stairmaster, it's kind of hard on your legs, but things like that um, are going to be better forms of cardio for you and they are less taxing on the body so that you're still able to build the maximum amount of muscle that you can while also focusing on cardio. Another thing that I wanted to talk about was um, keeping a journal. So I will show you my gym journal. I think I'm on the fourth journal now, which is crazy, but I keep mine in my gym bag and I keep a physical hard copy journal because I just find it satisfying to keep a journal, um, like a hard copy journal, and I also just feel good knowing it'll never delete itself if anything ever happens or if I lose my phone, like, I know that I have it right here. So this is mine, got a little barbell on it, which is super cute, I got this from Redbubble. Um, the other one I had, which I have over there, but it's, um, of a shadow figure of a girl squatting. So yeah, Redbubble has some really cute ones. And I actually write them in rainbow colors, so I try to spice it up a little bit. <laughs> um, so, see I'll like, kind of do them, rainbow color. But, so basically, essentially how I set them up is I have three columns going down the page. And the first column is the exercise that I did with the sets. So I have the exercise and the sets that I did. Um, and if I have any target reps, like for instance, for back squats, I wrote three sets of five, eight, and then 10. So a set of five, a set of eight, and a set of 10. Um, like I will write that in as well. And then in the second column, I write the weight that I used for that session and how many reps I actually got with that weight. And then in the last column, I write the rest time. And I don't do that for every single workout that, I mean, exercise that I do, but I do like to time my rest times for most things because um, it's just a way for me to keep things constant so I know that I'm actually progressing in the way that I should, rather than like I'm not just progressing because I took longer rest times in one session. So yeah, it just helps keep things constant when focusing on progressive overload, but you don't have to track your rest times. Um, that's just something that I do. But yeah, writing everything out is really awesome because it allows you to track your progress over time. And it also just kind of allows you to gamify the experience. So what was my high score last time? Um, can I beat that this time? Like, like I said, progressive overload is what you really want to focus on once you get your form right and just seeing it laid out is really awesome and it's really motivating and yeah it's really like a game like weightlifting is a very individualized sport where you're always trying to beat yourself and the competition's always with you which you know it really fits my personality really well 
um, where I was never into like soccer or basketball, like things with other people involved. Um, I like being able to compete with myself and get better um, and just work on myself. So yeah, um, having a journal is awesome, allows you to track your progress, allows you to make the experience more fun, like a game, and yeah, just a good way to make sure you're progressing. And if you're not sure which exercises to pick, I just recommend looking up on YouTube. Best exercise for quads, hamstrings, back. Um, and you will get tons and tons of videos giving you suggestions, but ultimately you're really going to want to focus on those compound movements. You know, don't go for those fancy movements where it's like balancing on a BOSU ball and doing a one-legged squat with the kettlebell overhead. Like, just focus on the basics. You don't need to do anything fancy to gain muscle. Like, you can literally just deadlift, squat, bench press, shoulder press, do the really simple things and you will gain plenty of muscle over time. And the exercises that you're really going to want to pick, and this comes with just trial and error, are the exercises that you feel the most mind-muscle connection in. So Mike Isertel actually calls this stimulus to fatigue ratio and this is a little bit more advanced so I'm not going to get into it now but the exercises you want to pick are those that give you the most mind-muscle connection, the most stimulus with the least amount of systemic fatigue. So for example, I don't know, you really want to incorporate lunges into your workout so you start doing lunges and you don't really feel it in your quads where you want to feel it. You start feeling it in your ankles a little bit more and you feel awkward in your knees um, and it makes you pretty tired after doing about like six reps. Probably not the best workout um, that you or the best exercise that you want to pick for your leg workout um, because it makes you very tired um, so you can't complete the maximum amount of reps that you can and you're not feeling it where you want to. So I actually don't do lunges in any of my workouts. Um, I will do front elevated lunges where you stay in place um, because those give me a better mind-muscle connection and less fatigue. So really it's just about um, trial and error, seeing what gives you the most mind-muscle connection, the least amount of pain, and gives you the least amount of fatigue um, elsewhere in your body. You know, obviously you want to feel the muscle that you want to work, like fatiguing, that's the goal. But you know, if you're out of breath and you're panting, you know, that's it's not a great um, workout because you're not maximizing muscle hypertrophy. Instead, you're working your cardio system. Um, and you know that's that's not really the goal if your goal is to build muscle unless you're doing circuit style training um but even still you know you shouldn't be so tired where you can't lift weights as well so yeah that's all that i have thank you so much for watching if you have any questions be sure to leave them below and i will answer them as soon as i can and please subscribe for more educational content um more fitness advice, nutrition advice, um, some college stuff as well, and I will see you in the next video.